of 2019 from crude oil to agro commodities or what they call soft commodities but of course there are quite a number of burning issues in 2019 including your basket of food prices good morning Adim. Good it's good to have you thank you i had a privilege of wrapping up the year with you so let's go down the end of our year commodity roundup what are the big stories here from fdc we just put out on the screen for our viewers to see what you guys have put together for us yes indeed i'll start by saying that 2019 has been a pretty good year for commodities we've seen commodities post the best performance annual performance since 2016 commodities from oil to cocoa, copper, post and all gains. But that trend hasn't didn't start this year. I mean, 2019 started with the concerns of, of global economic growth, concerns of a global, even a recession. We're seeing global PMIs decline, retail sales decline, business confidence weaken, consumer confidence weaken, and all that had a negative effect on prices. But all of a sudden, we're seeing this breakthrough in, 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 in the US-China trade disputes. We're seeing this suddenly the dollar weakening, which is driven by the U.S. dollar cutting federal, federal interest rates three times this year, and suddenly we're seeing this risk on sentiment sweep the markets. That has certainly shifted market sentiment and driven commodity prices upwards. Mm. So that is certainly the trend now we're seeing in commodity prices. And so we're seeing markets, are, investors are looking at the markets with the glass half full instead of glass yeah, half empty. It looks like a lot of. Uh rattlings and what have you in 2019 actually benefited commodities fear factor yes to to be precise fear concerns whatever uh, investors just keep wrapping up on, on on asset classes basically commodities and then weather conditions also contributed i'm sure adverse weather conditions also uh, contributed to soft commodities of course i think 2019 started the year with u.s and china trade dispute and geopolitical risk at the driver's seat mm. and we're ending the year with same thing, US China trade disputes, general possible risk, and also, also mm. weather conditions to the mm. driver's seat of commodities. Mm. So that's what's why in the okay, So let's go through this list a little bit uh, and start from the home front uh, where we are on local inflation numbers. If you take your list, yes, inflation started the year at 11.4, 11.5%. 11 this year, we're 11.8%, so we're around the same level. However, I think one crucial factor, one differentiating factor from 2018 was the border closure. The border was closed in the mid-late August. Yes. Caused a lot of supply mm. shortages, mm. which, of course, drove up food prices. Food prices, food inflation as a main main driver of inflation. I think, the, I think the land border closure is, is a major fault line for 2019 of course it just it just it just it just slapped everything in the middle and we're still trying to find our way uh, out of it but, but while we're battling all of that where are we regarding a few other issues we seem to have benefited from the crude oil rally this year oil prices gained nearly 30 percent yes oil prices up nearly 30 percent from 2016 mm. but at the same time 2019 was one of the most tumultuous years for oil so of course in August or in in late July we saw the biggest difference of almost 12 cents in all prices today. In all prices this year. So it has been a very volatile year. Of course, US China trade disputes was a major driver and global trade tension was a major driver of, of, of that downward action on prices. But of course in the middle in the late October, November we saw this breakthrough in, in US China trade 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 disputes mm. and of course OPEC coming to deepen its production cuts that has really driven prices upwards and of course more recently we're seeing geopolitical unrest in the Middle East we're seeing US launch airstrikes in, in Iraq contributing to this upward direction in prices so we're ending prices at $68 per barrel which is a comfortable level our benchmark for our prices is still that lower than $60 per barrel so we're a very comfortable level for us I think uh, OPEC has uh, carefully handled the year so far, uh, such that uh, prices did not really tank, as it were. Prices were okay because both Russia and in Saudi Arabia need prices at very decent levels, and I think they've been able to achieve that. Yes, I should say yes. Of course, Saudi Arabia was the main heavy lifter of this OPEC production cuts, but most of the rest was done by accident. We saw sanctions on Iran, sanctions on Venezuela, airstrikes on Saudi Arabia facility, protests, unrest, civil, civil strife affecting not just major OPEC countries. So most of OPEC countries are not complying with the deal, including Nigeria. 
So will that trend continue in 2020? I think so. I think that would be likely because if you most of the argument for these countries on the on the, on the, on the not complying with the pre production is because they need the money, they need all the fiscal revenue they can get. Yeah, everybody needs money, I do. I don't know where you're emphasizing that. <laughs> Nigeria, we all need we all need the money. If yes. you, we all need the money. If you look at the the bottom of the the, the, the that particular page that's uh, on, on the screen there, uh, external reserves down uh, significantly, a little above ten percent, up to below thirty nine billion dollars a barrel. So we need the money. Yes. As so well. It is likely that most of OPEC, almost of the OPEC countries will continue underperforming, not complying with the OPEC deal. So that would make room for shells coming to the market. So it depends. Maybe there'll be another supply disruption in Saudi Arabia. No one's hoping for any. Maybe there'll be another flare up in US China, US Iran conflict mm. or Saudi Arabia Iran. Mm. Maybe there'll be another flare up. Yeah, I saw the defensive attacks in Iraq this morning. Yes. Uh, overnight by the yes. U.S. And, and 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 the U.S. saying look, that's a warning uh, short to Iran. Yes. And I, I, I'm not sure how much that is rattling uh, the, the oil market. But but let's uh, just uh, before we leave this page, I'm interested in cocoa prices because uh, which technically takes us to the second page about the cocoa prices, wheat prices, corn and sugar as a roundup for the year. Yes, I'll start by saying agricultural commodities are best are the most are the commodities that are best positioned to benefit from any U.S.-China trade truce. Mm. I've seen that the phase one trade deal is... Good. The defense, uh, defense, defensive yes, materials. Yes, yes. And, of course, one of the major components of that trade deal is that China is going to purchase a lot of agricultural quantities from the U.S. Soybeans for what? Soybeans, mm. greens, pork. So, I've seen there's a possibility that commodities like wheat, corn, also, sugar would increase significantly in the first half of 2020 mm. because we're expecting a China trade, the US China trade to be signed. Mm. Well, so far this year, wheat prices up nearly 6%, corn prices lower 3.3%, air, sugar prices down 3.3%, with global demand. It looks like a mixed basket here. Yes, yes. Cocoa, another cocoa has done really well this year despite record production of the coast of Canada. I think that's going to be true. Strong global demand, of course, in Asia and Europe are saying consumer trends shift. Continue in 2020 and 2021. Uh, I, I'm interested in uh, where uh, my local basket of uh, uh, food prices are because uh, so charity begins at home. But again, let's talk about.